The koi is a relative of the domestic carp, who has been selectively bred for ornamental purposes for thousands of years. You may associate them more with Japanese fish ponds, but this started initially in China and has grown and grown since. Koi the PS4 game also comes from China and it is the first game from China to be released to western audiences on the PS4 platform. In Koi you take control of a small little orange fish whose mission it is to go and solve puzzles by guiding other little fish to flowers of their corresponding colour. The game has a visual aesthetic and musical style that reminds you a little bit of Journey and Flower, although in the way that it plays it does kind of feel like Echo the Dolphin as well. It's quite a short game with 8 levels built with the Unity engine that sees you go through small ponds to big downstream rivers and then into the sewage systems that the humans have left behind, causing the problems of corrupted fish. White fish turning into black fish, good versus evil, fairly common tropes. The game is very easy to control that you just move along with your analogue stick and you press the circle button to interact with anything once you've guided your fish to its flower or try to talk to a frog and try to solve the puzzle of matching lizards. The game is very minimalist from its obvious story setting of human pollution versus nature to the way that the art is detailed, very simple flowers, blues upon little bits of green or blacks upon various different concretes of grey and rusted metallic gates of that kind of browny orangey colour. It's a game that won't take you too long to complete with it being only 8 levels long but you can return to those levels to unlock bonus stars or little pieces of a jigsaw puzzle which reveal artwork to you in the menu. Use. It's all very simple in the way that it's presented as well, there's no real menu options that aren't icons for example. One of the nice things with this as well as with any game like it that we have already referred to is the music. There's a very soft, very nice gentle piano based motif that rolls all throughout the game and changes occasionally once you get into more perilous positions, especially as you progress through the levels and encounter the more human based destruction. Throughout the game there are obstacles to overcome such as avoiding the black fish that have been tainted by the human pollution and trying to change them back into white fish once you get to an end of level puzzle. Playing the game however, you cannot die. If you do come into contact with these black fish they'll knock you away and you'll lose your colour, seeing a little small regeneration bar around your fish slowly go back up as you drift away and your colour comes back to you and you can go on your merry way again trying to save all of your fishy friends. The game is very visual, in fact it's barely got any language in it at all apart from occasional conversations with the whitefish or the frogs. The audio sensory simulation here is very key. There are the sounds of water as you are swimming around, there are the sounds of wind as you are going downstream very very quickly, there are the sounds of really nice kind of calming drips all around you regardless of where you are in the game. Then you've got the beautiful piano in the background giving a really soft and nice calming feel to the game that you are playing even if you are in peril. That sadly is where the allure of the game ends because before you can really begin to get into it, it's over. The length, whilst short for obvious reasons of trying to get a very small, easily contained experience out there, is far too short. There is also not enough change in the gameplay other than a couple of the puzzles to really grip you into it or give you much of a challenge. And once you've played it, you've had this kind of nature versus human games for a long long time and you don't really feel anything at the end of it. It's not got any kind of gusto to its narrative that separates it or elevates it or even to be slightly harsh puts it on any kind of a level par with games like Flower and Journey even though it tries to evoke that pastel, beautiful visual sense of minimalism that those games do as well. Aside from it being quite a nice little piece to play, it hasn't got any kind of sticking power in the brain once you've completed it. It was quite nice, you play as a fish, which is always nice as well, but at the end of it, it just doesn't stick with you enough. It's a perfectly good, fun, enjoyable game. It's a good game to spend about an hour or so on a Sunday afternoon if you've got nothing to play or if you've got young family members, but it doesn't evoke any of the same emotional response as any of its compatriots do, and they do that slightly better anyway than a lot of other games. Decide for yourself, it is available on the PlayStation Store now to download and it is a good thing that we are getting games from all over the world 
from various different publishers in whatever country they can be from to release games to a western market that don't need to have any kind of cultural significance any kind of cultural knowledge that you can just get in and just play a game and that is one of the best things about koi is that it completely eliminates any kind of international cultural misunderstandings or different kind of cultural cliches and just gives you a very easy nice looking beautifully musical game to enjoy and that is a great achievement in itself for more articles and videos like this please visit insertdisc.co.uk or follow us on twitter at insertdiscuk